Oh, I didn't see you there. I'm Hope. I'm a programming director at KVRX, and these are my library picks. My first album is Pony by Orville Peck. Um, a little bit about this album. It came out, I believe, um, spring of last year, 2019. I listened to this album, I believe, the day after it was released. My friend Miles recommended it, recommended it to me, and ever since I've been in love with it, I reviewed it for the station, actually. Um, it's a country music album, and Orville Peck is actually um, a gay country music artist, which you don't see very often. I think that he and Lil Nas X kind of opened the scene a bit um, to queer people in the queer community, uh, especially for me, who... It's about relationships and feeling lost and wandering through them and always finding yourself leaving and for the big sky, basically. I remember in an interview, Orville Peck himself said that if he were to pick one song that encapsulated the entire album, it would be Big Sky. So um, it's one of my favorites. It's been one of my favorites since the beginning, but yeah. Another one would be Queen of the Rodeo, which is about a drag queen um, from Canada which was very interesting hearing him talk about in, at his concert that I went to last semester in October, if I'm correct. Um, he's a very great performer. He actually had a whistling contest on stage, um, which was very fun with his bandmates. But yeah, Orville Peck, Pony. The next album I chose was Fade Into the Dawn by Field Medic. I love this man very much. Um, this is an indie folk album. Um, Field Medic has been one of my favorites in recently. Like every single week when I look at my top albums that I listen to, there's always some form of Field Medic on it. I'm actually seeing him soon this week, so God bless. Um, one of the reasons why I love this album so much is because it mixes like uh, drum kicks with acoustic guitar. Um, like, my favorite type of guitar and sound is acoustic, but um, the way that he mixes it with um, the drum kick makes it very fun and playful. I'll admit that this album is a little less uh, happy than his other one, Songs from the Sunroom. Like, his first song is called Used to Be Romantic, and it goes through, like, the stresses of touring and the existentialism of it. Um, and kind of sets the mood for the whole album as um, a little less uh, happy, a little more cynical in a way. <laughs> but I really do love his, this album. I love uh, the cover art as well. I can't quite see it from this big sticky, but it's very beautiful. But yeah, um, Phil Medic is very active on Twitter. I love him. I at him all the time because I always play his music. <laughs> I've played him to the point where I cannot play him anymore on KVRX because he is blacklisted. Um, he is great. Anyway, go medic. Fade into the dawn. I love this man. My next album is Kate Teague. T Kate Teague's self-titled EP. Um, I actually also reviewed this album for the station. I really love it specifically because her voice is very deep and raspy. Um, I myself have like kind of a deep voice when I sing, so I like being able to sing these songs. Um, originally, my favorite song was Gilly. Uh, it's about um, not feeling down about um, not finding love again, about a failed attempt at a relationship or dating or whatever. Um, my favorite uh, lyric was, Gilly, you'll be all right. And I think that's really reassuring. Um, for someone who, at, when I listened to this album, I was very going through the same thing where I was very uh, sad about like not having a successful attempt at a relationship again. Um, one of my other favorite songs from this album is In Our Element. It goes through the same sort of feeling in that you were interested in someone, but you realize a little too late that they weren't actually interested in you and that you read the situation entirely wrong. Um, it's a very uh, hypnotizing song. Her style kind of mixes with a little bit of her Mississippi twang, if I, if I would say so. Um, it's very rock-influenced as well, but yeah, I, 
I really like her voice and I really like this album. Kate Teague. Kate Teague. My next album is Flavor by Paul Cherry. I first listened to this album, I believe, early March of last year, so about this time actually. Um, he toured in, um, in Austin for South by Southwest. And I saw him in a show where he played before Hers, Rest in Peace, and Broncho. I remember making a playlist for that show, and I remember really liking the song Like Yesterday. Um, his album and his music is a little, um, I would say like jazz influenced a little bit. Um, it's still very much indie pop though. Um, like Yesterday uh, like, has a really good um, intro to it. It goes like, looking through my phone and I'm like, Wow. <laughs> but anyway, I really like his, um, I really like his, his uh, musicianship as well. When he plays shows, he uses a 12 string guitar, which is just gorgeous to listen to. It's just like literally music to my ears. <laughs> but um, I, very, I very much enjoy that song. Um, one of my other favorites off this album is Changing Times. It's a lot more fun. It has a little flute in it, which is interesting. Um, but it's about like you know the state of the political climate and such. Um, you know times are changing, things are changing around you. Um, but yeah, all cherry flavor. My last album, one of my favorites of all time. Cows on Hourglass Pond by A.B. Tear. I love A.B. Tear, and if you don't know, A.B. Tear is part of Animal Collective. Um, he is one of the main singers, along with Panda Bear, the one of the one with more <laughs> streams on Spotify. Um, I have definitely played this album like, front to back, top to bottom, on my show multiple times, um, specifically because it fits my mellow sort of mood for my show. Um, a lot of uh, Animal Collective's other stuff is a bit more loud and noisy and uh, energetic. This album is a bit different from that. It's very unique in its sound. I think A.B. does a good job of like, making himself uh, sound different and set himself apart from the other members in Animal Collective, even like Deacon, who has a less energetic sound than someone like Panda Bear or Geologist, so yeah. Um, my favorite song off of this album is Remember Mayan. Not specifically for the lyrics or anything, but just for the mood that it puts me in. Um, it just makes me very happy to listen to. Um, it's um, a very, like, it's a very uh, uplifting melody, I would say. Um, Another one of my favorite songs is Taken Boy. Um, it's a sort of a love song um, in that he sings about being uh, a taken boy, uh, taken by a taken girl. Um, just, It's very wistful in the sense that it reminds you of that sort of innocence of being um, like taken by someone, in love with someone, or enamored by them. Um, I think A.V.'s music is very emotional and very transparent and that's a lot of what I like about him and what I like about Animal Collective as a whole. I would definitely say that I'm an Animal Collective stan considering I'm apparently in the top 1% of listeners on Spotify <laughs> which I found out yesterday but I love AV very much. I love this album very much. Um, it is one of my top 10 of definitely the past year or two. I was on Hourglass Pond by A.B. Taylor. Anyway, I'm Hope, and these are my library picks.